What's up, everybody? Welcome to Flippin' Bats, where today we have a great guest joining. He joined a few months ago. He is now the American League 2023 Rookie of the Year, unanimously, might I add. He is Gunnar Henderson, and I am pumped to have him back on to talk about that 2023 year where he unanimously won the award, to talk about the Orioles, the success they had in the regular season, the not as much success that they had in the postseason and why he thinks that is, what they learned from the experience, how they're going to change that going forward. Um, his offseason, what he's doing, playing golf with with Adley Rutschman and, uh, of course, the Shohei Otani contract. And if he's excited that he's not in the AL East, the $700 million. And asking Gunner about the deferrals. $68 million a year for 10 years is being deferred until after this next decade. Asking him... Uh, as, as another player in the league, what he thinks about that and what he thought when, when he heard the news there. So um, this one's a lot of fun. Going to talk all about the offseason. It's light. It's fun. Talk about what he's doing to prepare for next year, what he wants his goals to be next year as well. Always love talking to Gunnar Henderson. He's a great dude. He's a great young player in the game of baseball. He's a bright young star in this game and love you all being able to hear from him. So without further ado, let's welcome in now the unanimous AL Rookie of the Year, Gunnar Henderson. Five ball, out of the track, at the wall, it's gone! Home run! Turns on a ball, deep right field, and gone! What a game, what a moment. All right, I am pumped to be joined now by the 2023 unanimous AL Rookie of the Year, Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar, thanks for hopping back on, man. Uh, yes, sir, thank you for having me. Of course, I, I gotta ask, I saw you a couple weeks ago, you were recently shown at the Auburn-Alabama football game. Uh, down there in Auburn. I know you're a huge Auburn guy. Walk me through your emotions that fourth quarter of that game. Man, it was uh, still a still a sore subject. I mean, we were <laughs> we were excited the the whole game, and then when that snap went over his head, followed by the play that uh, that they crossed the line of scrimmage and threw it. I was like, mm -hmm. man, we're we're gonna win this thing. And then of course, just the everybody you could hear a pin drop in that stadium. It was so <laughs> quiet. It was crazy. Oh, man. Gunner, since uh, we last talked, you came on the show a few months ago. Uh, the Orioles finished off a great season. Number one seed in the American League. You had a great year, unanimously winning the AL Rookie of the Year. Uh, won that a few weeks ago when they announced it on MLB Network. So what was that moment like, having all your family around you? How special was that announcement for you? Yeah, no, it was it was really awesome just having having them there to uh, just to watch and uh just because that's been the pretty much support group that's been with me through my whole career. And it's, uh, it was pretty cool to have them there for that special moment. Was it a surprise when they brought uh, Cal Ripken Jr. on to talk to you? Uh, yes and no, because uh, they kind of said it was a special guest. And then I was like, well, I can I can kind of guess who it might be. <laughs> because uh, he was, well, Greg Olson was the last one, but he was the one before it. And uh, yeah, he's just been really helpful to me. And on everything because he'll come in the locker room sometimes and just being able to chat with him and uh, pick his brain has been really cool and really helpful for me. How ha how has he been, you think, the most impactful to you? Just coming in, if, if you're picking his brain, what's it about? Offense, defense, playing the same position? Like, where do you typically lean on him for help? Uh, honestly, defense because he was a – he's a taller shortstop as well and uh, he was kind of going through the same boat of uh, everybody was saying that, yeah, he's maybe too tall for shortstop and then just being able to go out there and prove it. Um, I feel like he's kind of bought into that with me because I'm kind of in the same boat that he was whenever he was in my, whenever he was my age. How, how cool was it to, to see him hop on for, for that announcement? And one, I don't know if you've seen the comparison, but your rookie of the year stats, you and him are pretty close to the same stats and obviously being, from the Orioles, both taller shortstops. I mean, it's pretty cool to see a, a legend like Cal Ripken Jr. and then yourself, your rookie year, having such a similar like dynamic throughout this part of your career so far. Yeah, no. Anytime you can, your name is beside a guy of that caliber is uh, pretty special. So it's uh, something I don't take lightly, and it's been pretty cool to be able to be compared to him because I mean, he's a Hall of Famer and he's a really special player. Yeah. You guys this year were the number one seed in the playoffs, uh, had a fantastic regular season winning, you know, as much as you guys did winning the AL East, 
uh, but didn't have the success in the playoffs this year. What would you say your takeaway from the 2023 playoffs was? Honestly, just when you go into it, just don't try and change anything. I mean, yeah, the energy is going to be, of course, a lot higher and everything's going to be weighted a little bit differently. But the I feel like the ones that can make it, I guess, less like playoffs and more like the regular season games where you just go out there and have fun and just play loose, I feel like that's when you do your best out there. Do you guys feel like maybe as a team you did play it up a little bit too much? I mean, I feel like it'd be impossible not to with the young core that you guys have and a lot of guys on the team never experiencing the playoffs. Do you think you went into the playoffs like, oh, boy, this is playoff time. We have to do more now to be able to win. Um, I felt like we just got – I mean, I felt like we played our game. It just – we ran into Texas, and they were really hot, and they didn't miss any of the pitches that uh, we, we threw, and they uh, it was hats off to them. They were – played really well and they ended up going out and winning it all. So I guess if you go out, that's the way you want to, but uh, still not fun to go out in the first round. So we'll definitely take this experience and uh, be able to use it as fuel for next year. Yeah. I think the Rangers went on to do some pretty big things in the playoff <laughs> this year. Would you say playoff baseball? You had your first experience this year in the playoffs was playoff baseball, everything you imagined it might be. Oh yeah. That's uh, that's what I've been looking forward to. And uh, now that I got a taste of it, I just want to keep making playoff pushes every year. What do you think you learned this year? Obviously, we talk about not winning the first series you guys play, being a great team in the regular season. What do you think your takeaway from this first year is that you'll take into the playoffs next time you're there? Hopefully, hopefully that's next year. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a very long season, so just stay the course of it and just allow yourself to embrace the ups and downs of the season because they all, they all happen. And being able to do that and just limit the amount of downtime is – I guess the biggest thing for me and um, yeah, just figuring out that 162 is every bit of 162. It's a very long season. So just embrace it and uh, don't get caught up with the, uh, if you have early struggles. How many did you end up playing this year? I think it was 150 something. I don't know uh, if that included playoffs or not, but. Is 162 in your future in a regular season? Oh yes. Uh, I want to be out there every single day that I possibly can. Yeah. That'd be cool. Uh, I, I saw earlier this off season, you and Adley played golf. I have an important question for you here. Who's the better golfer, you or Adley? Honestly, I, I will say we are very similar. It's a close match every single time we play. We both hit the ball a long ways off the tee box. And Shocker. I'll say, it, honestly, it depends on who's putting better that day is who's going to win. So it's, it makes for a very good matchup. So I can't really give you a – sorry, it's kind of a beating around the bush answer, but <laughs> – it's uh we're both very similar in golf so it's a very it's a very level match Every, you, yes. nobody's giving anybody strokes it literally all comes down to who's putting better oh yeah exactly how often do you get out uh i actually play a decent amount because my older brother now that he's done uh playing baseball we go out and play golf a lot so we'll get out there and then some of my buddies who are um in college who are playing ball that whenever they get on their break we'll go play some so I play a decent amount during the off season and I try to during spring training on the off days. Where, where'd your older brother play baseball? Uh, he played at Auburn or oh, he, did. he went Juco and then, uh, yeah, made the so, team at you, Auburn. Would you have been teammates with him if you ended up signing there? I would have him and uh, my first cousin, we'd all three been there. <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. yeah. So it was, it was kind of tough to turn down, but, um, he was helpful in the decision to say, do whatever you want to do. And, um, I mean, just wherever your heart takes you. And I felt like I uh, made the right decision. I think you've also made the right decision. What else you got going on this off season? We've seen you at football games. I know you're playing a lot of golf. What else are you doing this off season? Uh, so I've been duck hunting a lot. I actually went this morning and uh, yeah, my little brother and I do a, do a decent amount of duck hunting in the off season. Did you get anything? Yeah, we killed six this morning. So uh, we might, we might end up going tomorrow morning as well. So now Obviously, busy offseason, getting ready for baseball as well. Your attention shifts to 2024. And after a, a massive 2023 rookie season, what would you say, Gunner, your personal goals are for 2024? Maybe your personal and, and team goals. Yeah, uh, team goals definitely to make a World Series push. I mean, we got the taste of playoffs. And, um, I mean, honestly, that's what I want to shoot for every year. Um uh, that's something that I've always wanted to do is win a World Series and feel like you got to set your sights high and shoot for them. And uh, I'd say personally, I mean, 
I like to, like I said, I like to set my set my bar high, and I want to shoot for an MVP. And I feel like I just hold myself to pretty high standard, and just the I put a lot of work in the weight room and in the in the cage. So just uh, going to try and do that and get ready for the season. So I feel like if I just allow myself to take over um, and just trust my instincts, I'll be able to be in a good position for that. Well, I don't know anybody that's listening is going to doubt you because it was a couple months ago I said, who's going to be the 2023 AL Rookie of the Year? And you said Gunnar Henderson's going to be. And fast, <laughs> fast forward a couple months, and that was absolutely happening. So what, what would you say – what does your offseason look like? Mine were always – interesting in terms of you know i try and take what i felt i didn't do well in the regular season or in the season prior and then go into an off season and try and work on specific things to get better in certain areas and obviously try and lift and get bigger and stronger so what are your off season focuses or are you saying i had a great year last year i'm going to do the exact same thing i did the off season prior yeah um i try not to get caught up in what i did the years past because I know the one time that I went through and had some some success in like an instructs camp the next off season, I was trying to replicate it after taking a break and your body changes and um, it moves differently uh, after you take those breaks. So I just try to go in there and let my body be loose. And I feel like that's something that I've, uh, I guess, experienced over the past years of being in pro ball is just allowing my body to pretty much be loose and then however it moves it moves and I try not to replicate something because usually it's not going to be the exact same movement and you're sitting there and chasing ghosts essentially and yeah. going down a rabbit hole that you uh you might not ever find what you were looking for thinking back on on your last season was I mean it was such a good year in the end you look up and obviously AL unanimous rookie of the year but it wasn't the easiest beginning of the year for you it was a sort of a struggle at the beginning of the year and then at a certain point, you've seemingly figured it all out and went on to have a great year and be super successful and helpful to your team. And a big part of the reason the Orioles finished with the number one seed, looking back on on that time at the beginning of the year, how how would you say you were able to flip the switch and and have the year you did? Was it something you just stuck to your game plan and said, I know eventually it'll turn around? Or was there something that you found in your swing or in your approach or mentally that you were like, I need to fix this. And you did. Uh, so it's kind of two things. I was, I felt like I was trying to be too perfect up there and trying to find the perfect pitch to do damage with. And if you're sitting there looking for the perfect pitch, whenever you get it, you're probably going to be late and miss it regardless. And uh, that, and then I wasn't being like as aggressive, but being able to hear from my teammates who have been through it. And then, um, Actually, Hyder, he came up to me and was like, uh, just like to see be a little bit more aggressive. And um, I mean, just taking the shots whenever you get them. And I felt like being able to do that, just allow myself to have those free swings. If I swing and miss at it, at least it was a good attempt at it. And eventually I'll get timed up with it. And as soon as I started doing that, I was able to hit some balls hard. And once I started falling, I felt like it just kind of took off from there. And it sort of like frees you up mentally as well right like early in the account if you swing and miss who cares it's oh one not a big deal but it just allows you to have probably more flexibility at the plate and feel probably a little bit better with your approach right yeah i mean definitely i felt like one of the one of the swings that i kind of got that idea from was there was a hit and run on and uh just the, the way my body felt like so free just i mean i got to swing at this pitch is what i'm supposed to do and I ended up hitting it pretty hard so just, uh, yeah, allowing yourself to be loose and not get caught up in, oh, if I swing and miss, then that, that'll that look bad. Just so what? Just keep swinging and uh, it'll eventually start falling. It's also probably nice to have somebody come up and tell you that. Because I imagine as as a young guy in the lineup, your first, your full rookie season, was there a thought in your head of like, well, I don't want to swing at the first pitch and get out and then screw over the guy behind me who's then going to have to take a pitch. So to have probably somebody on the staff come up and be like, swing away, man, like who cares? Probably even more so allowed you to stop worrying about everything going on around you and get back to your personal approach that you've probably had your entire life. Yeah, I mean, definitely helps come from the staff. And I'd say it probably helps more when like the players are like, hey, just go out there and do it if you get out first pitch uh we know that it'll be more times than not that it won't be a like week out so 
that helped a lot, especially being my first full year coming from like some of the veteran guys that's, that uh, that have been through it and know pretty much exactly what I was going through. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure if, if you've heard anything about it, Gunner, but over the weekend, there was a fairly big signing in the game of baseball. How happy are you? Because the conversation was leaning heavily towards Toronto. How happy are you that Shohei Otani is not going to be in the AL East for the next decade? Yeah, I got to face him once, and I'm, uh, I'm very glad. That, <laughs> uh, well, I guess I had to face him at least once uh, with the Dodgers. Well, he won't be pitching next year, so in 25, we'll look forward to facing him, but man, uh, that's just electric stuff, but um, very happy to see that he got what he was worth. I mean, yeah. it's just unreal talent, and um, yeah, it's really fun to watch and really fun to compete against. Yeah, pretty big difference in facing a guy maybe once a year if you run into him, as opposed to, I feel like you guys play the Blue Jays every other week, so. Yeah, it uh, seems like we play them all the time. <laughs> What yeah. were your thoughts when you heard it first come out? He announced it, obviously, on, on his Instagram. But when it first came out, 10 years, $700 million. <laughs> what was your gut reaction? I feel like mine was pretty similar to the entire community of baseball when you just, like, you draw hits the floor because that number hasn't been mentioned, like, ever. Uh -huh. or I think it said it was, like, the biggest in North American sports. Is that right? Yep, North American sports I mean, history. That, that's crazy. But, I mean, he deserves it. Like, you don't see a guy who can go out there and be an ace and then also lead the league in home runs and have a 300 average. So, he deserves every bit of it. So, I, I want to talk to you about, obviously, we hear about the signing, and then the next few days we hear about the way the contract's all set up. And when the contract was first announced, all we heard was unprecedented deferrals. Nobody really knew what that meant, but I think everybody knows it's Shohei Otani. He's one of one. His contract is probably also going to be one of one. And then you hear that the deferrals are $68 million per year. He's going to be making $2 million a year, baseball-wise, his incentives and, and advertisements and all that stuff. He's making a lot more. He'll be fine. But $68 million a year deferred for the next 10 years. What what are your thoughts on that, Gunner? Because I'm still like I'm still trying to process it and make sense of it myself. And I know the entire baseball world is. I was talking to my brother about it last night, and we're all trying to we're him and I are trying to make sense of it and talk about yeah. what makes sense, what doesn't, and how crazy the whole thing is. What are your thoughts on that? I feel like for him, it's it's honestly a pretty good idea because I feel like he knows that he doesn't. I mean, be nice to have it, but at the same time, he wants to win right now. Right. So being able to just clear up that space to go get some more pitchers. He's uh, it's a very smart move on his end, and he's wanting to go out and win a World Series. But um, I mean, that that helps a lot. But that is a, a lot of money to defer. But um, that's what he wanted to do, and I feel like that's he's just wanting to set up uh, the Dodgers. Yeah, well, that's kind of my thoughts. A hundred percent is the guy has been very vocal about saying. I just, I want to win. That's my number one priority. And, you know, money is what it is, but that's not my number one priority. And then I, I people from, from what I've seen so far, the conversation has gone to like, oh my God, this is, this is crazy. How is this allowed? Blah, blah, blah. And I, I think what's important to realize here is that, you know, there's still, it's still a pretty big hit on their CBT. And this is basically Shohei's ability to, I, I just don't think you'll find many players that would say, okay, I'm going to make all this money and I don't even want it now. I, I want it later. And I think that's yeah. the big difference here that, that people are missing is this isn't this big scheme from the Dodgers. This was Shohei's idea saying, I don't even care about the money right now. I'll, I'll take it in the future and probably move out of California to make a little bit more in that process. But right now yeah. I just want to win and I want the Dodgers to be able to sign some more people. And, and I really think that's uh, – it was his idea, and I think it's really this really cool idea for him to be able to have to help his team win. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I mean, I felt like that's exactly what he was doing, and um, I mean, hats off to him. That's a pretty cool thing that I don't know if anybody's ever done. Gunnar, if you, when you sign your first seven hundred million dollar contract, what's what's the first thing you're gonna buy? Um, honestly, I would just like uh. Some some good plot of land. That's bad. I it. love that. <laughs> I, yeah, just somewhere that I can have my own space. That's that's. I'll be happy there. Just like the perfect hunting and fishing area to have that you can just go out on whenever you want. Exactly. <laughs> Speaking of contracts, got our word is 
from the Baltimore Orioles that they are interested at least in an extension. Of course they are. They should be. Have the Orioles yet reached out to you about an extension? Uh, not that I'm aware of so far. Is that something that you want or hope, hope it happens soon? I would, I would love to. Um, I mean, just depends on uh, what they're willing. I mean, it's, it'll be cool to play in Baltimore for a while. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they've been nothing but great to me so far. So it's been really fun to be able to play for them. Speaking of playing in Baltimore, before, before I let you go, we got to talk about what the hell is going on with this stadium situation there? I feel like every day I see something that's like the stadium. I thought a couple months ago I saw the Orioles were signing this long-term deal with the city to keep, you know, Camden Yards there. And then I feel like over the last few days I've, I've seen something that I, I honestly don't know. So I honestly would love your opinion on what the hell is happening. But is it is it not guaranteed that the city is going to keep the stadium there or the Orioles would stay there? What's happening? Uh, as far as I was aware, I, I thought they signed the deal where it extended through like 2032. That's what I, I thought, thought that was. I don't think it, I they don't announced think it on there, but yeah, I don't know. I, that's that was as far as I was notified was that, and uh, I mean they announced it during the game, so that's uh, that's what <laughs> well, I was under the assumption of what happened. If they announce it during the game, then hopefully it is something that is ultimately happening. Yeah, yeah so that's that's all I have on that. That's all I really uh, heard about it. Gunner, I appreciate you joining me again, man. This is always a lot of fun. I just wanted to, again, congratulate you on your 2023 season. Uh, hopefully bigger and better things to come next year for yourself personally and for the Orioles. But always love having you on, man. You can come back on whenever you want. Oh, I appreciate it. I enjoy it. Of course, man. Me as well. This is a lot of fun. All right. Hope you all enjoyed that conversation from Gunnar Henderson. Truly a great dude. Always love having him on. It's the second time now that he's been on, but had to catch up with him again after winning that award and hearing how that the year finished up for him and hearing about the playoffs because it, it isn't an it is an interesting conversation for me with with the Orioles having one of the youngest teams in baseball having the most successful year of anybody in the American League in the regular season but not having that success in the playoffs and wondering why that was you know I, I could see from the outside okay this is a young team that hasn't really been here maybe they're doing a little too much and to hear him uh, say that and to talk about needing to do the opposite and to talk about what they're going to do going forward I thought was really cool um, as well as his thoughts on the, the Shohei contract as well so really enjoyed Gunnar Henderson joining hope you all did as well rooting for him going forward forever he's going to have such a good career so thank you all for listening make sure you're subscribed for every listen to your podcast Apple Spotify you can watch everything now on Spotify as well you can also watch everything on YouTube at Flippin' Bats Pod there. Everything we do, we put on YouTube. We're also on all social media at Flippin' Bats Pod for all of you. But until next week, my friends, that does it. Appreciate you all for listening. Until next time.